My name is Roger Meyer. I'm working uh, at Siemens, living in Switzerland. Um, did some uh, computer system uh, engineering uh, in the past, like embedded computer hacking and so on. And within my department, we started with GitLab. Hey all, Fabio Huser, um, software architect at Siemens, mostly doing uh, front-end stuff and, you know, as a side hobby, maintaining the GitLab platform at Siemens. <laughs> so, um, we heard a lot about GitLab, how it's used in big companies and uh, really cool scenarios today already. So we kind of thought, hey, how can we bring the idea and kind of the DevOps culture as we roll it out within Siemens a bit better uh, to you? So we decided, let's pack that into a story. Who is familiar with Gaul's Law in this room? Ah, some people, yeah, that's lovely. <laughs> so Gaul's Law, quite old, but for us, it's still kind of through. Um, so you'll see it here. Basically, to summarize, um, a complex system will never work. You always have to start small and kind of scale it up from there. And today, we're going to show you why this is um, the truth for so many things, and hopefully you can learn one or the other thing from there as well. Cool, so just one uh, slide about Siemens, how we started out in the past. Um, Siemens wasn't like this multi-million dollar company since the beginning. We started actually out quite small. So there were two guys, uh, Werner from Siemens, that's kind of where the name is coming from, um, you know, in a backyard machine shop. So it was pretty much an uh, early day German um, startup already. And the other funny thing is the first patent kind of shows you um, that seems all about innovation and, you know, research thing was actually um, filed in um, the jail. So <laughs> Werner von Siemens um, uh, invented the whole electro galvanization in jail and it kind of started from there. So small, small startup, but you see 18... 47, so quite a while back. And we've built an electrical car <laughs> before <laughs> Tesla, <laughs> but they haven't been that successful <laughs> during that time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, you see, small company, and I would say we, we had more or less success, so Siemens still existing nowadays, but of course it's a bit more complex at this point. So you see a ton of stuff, uh, what we are building, so for example the tube here was also um, built by, by Siemens, at least some of them. Um, and the other really nice thing you see here, those are in fact silos. So si um, Siemens exists as so many different smaller companies. Um, as anyone, we really love to not talk to each other. So a ton of <laughs> silos over there. And you know, it's mainly focused on business to business. So it's really hard to kind of grasp the connection to the customers. You know, all this big company mumbo jumbo as i think most people here are familiar with that kind of thing so you see us in terms of number um two people that was kind of cool now it's uh, 380,000 people so you actually see the scale just got much bigger and the whole complexity um you know kind of really showed themselves so that's kind of the you know outgoing situation we have and you know for us it was kind of the challenge how do we build a devops culture around this really fractured federalistic kind of company structure. Um, yeah, you see also many different cultures are involved, 190 countries, so also in a you know, like human to human interaction level, the challenges are certainly there, and you know, if you're interested, we have also a couple open jobs there. <laughs> <laughs> cool, so that's kind of the major part of the story we're gonna tell you today, and we try to answer the question, what is this code? So this kind of code is our lovely baby, code Siemens.com. That's our adaption of GitLab, which we're using within Siemens. And we really try to, you know, brand this idea. So it's not only GitLab, yet another instance. It's really a community. It's a brand which is behind of that. So now you could quite easily say, um, hey, we take a GitLab, we add a little bit of Siemens sauce, and we have code Siemens.com. But um, Roger kind of showed you how this whole off story started. Yep, at the early beginning, as you see, in 2013, we got uh, in love with GitLab. The <laughs> UI looked a little bit different. We had that nice Fox <laughs> logo. And if you look at the application uh, architecture, there were just three little pieces. <laughs> so the cool thing was it was a MIT license, so we are addicted to open source software. 
uh, especially within uh, from the uh, embedded system development and so on I'm have my origin in and developer self-service so this was one of the of the major topics for us so that people we don't need an administrator creating kind of users admins and so on and uh, creating repos so having the people who are being able to just use it in 2013 yeah, you can imagine we have probably all the version controls uh, that exist on the planet uh, in use within the company. <laughs> 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 and uh, of course, then also all the build tools and um, we have code bases with over 20 years of history. So uh, uh, a lot of those. Yeah. And, and there was no company wide source code hosting during that time. <laughs> <laughs> so it then we started um, preparing that uh, in-house for us, uh, BT GitLab at the early days, it was called, uh, the plan was to have it available for about 100 people. So for uh, the embedded CPU uh, module platform users and so on. And uh, we, we are heavily using internal social network uh, networks during that time. Uh, this was um, social cost. And I was suggesting, hey, of course, it is nice. I have a solution for my team, but guys, we need a, a common platform called Siemens.com. My colleague just registered the name, and a few months later, I told my boss, I made of our uh, 100 people GitLab instance called Siemens.com, and we will have other people joining us on the platform, and uh, they were okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you see already here it's quite an entrepreneurial kind of spirit you know which which we try to to go forward um i mean it was a hefty discussion you can imagine you have like a small server and everyone is kind of hunky dory and suddenly have like people you don't even know on the platform playing around and of course the computer cost is gonna rise and rise and rise but it, even back then we kind of thought hey this ideo um, ideologistic kind of idea we had and uh, the route we want to take um, is the right thing to do, and all the details we'll figure out later on the way. <laughs> One important topic, yeah, this was uh, in during the early days I made that hat. Uh, we didn't have uh, the platform up and running, <laughs> but later on as we had the platform up and running, just uh, took a picture, put that as a logo, and then one of our community members created that fancy logo, so people are identifying themselves. So we have now stickers, people putting that on, the, on their notebooks and so on. Um, we were focusing on not, we, we did not focus on complainers. So this <laughs> was a, an important topic for us. So we had a lot of people that were addicted to uh, on, on the way of working with Git, hey, we need Git, we don't like uh, use that version control and so on. And we focused on the people that were on fire with us for that common uh, coding platform. And so we've, we've established an ambassador circle. Uh, so we have monthly calls and all those people, the power users uh, um, contributing to our documentations and so on. And of course, nowadays, people do really identify themselves also with the platform. So yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you meet Siemens developer, ask him, do you know code Siemens com? I'm pretty sure he will know it. Yeah. I mean, the platform is sadly just an in-house thing, but I would say the logo is quite cool. I mean, if you're a developer, you kind of can relate to code. And uh, we brought some stickers with us. So if you're interested in code and stickers, <laughs> um, feel free to reach out to us. <laughs> At the very early beginning, as we are all developers, to make this platform a success and to bring this out to the whole uh, company, it was key for us to have a great team <laughs> that is doing this. And um, so at the very early beginning, we defined the team charter. So we really, as we have enough silos within the company already, the goal was to really have cross silo thinker people to have people with a strong open source mindset that, uh, that have worked within communities as maintainers, as contributors and so on. So to bring in that collaborative way of working into the company. So it's not like uh, an administrator crew that is looking at a green lamp. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we have a, a team of eight people that is doing development and operations, all the things uh, for that whole platform. Yeah. 
and also the vision is uh, quite old but still valid. <laughs> Collaborate on code and share within minutes. You can imagine in the past there were a lot of, if you had two teams have to work together. Oh, which kind of version control to use, which servers, and setting all those things up took <laughs> a long, long time in the past. Nowadays, it's just code seems come, create group, add your members, bang. <laughs> I mean, you know, the stuff which Roger just showed you kind of sounds benign, right? I mean, I think it's quite clear. Um, everyone needs to have a vision, everyone needs to have goals. Um, but we've seen it in the past, it's you kind of get really stuck with technology, right? I mean, there are so many great tools out there. The open source world, you know, comes up with new tools every week. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, we really try to solve uh, like a human issue. We want to collaborate, and the tool is just a secondary thing after all. And you know, also thanks to GitLab, we really found a tool which facilitates this ideology. It's all about the people behind it, and you know, to kind of maintain this idea and also have this community spirit within Siemens, you really need to establish such a community. You need to find the right people. In the open source world, you would say, hey, we want to have all maintainer personality. Um, within Siemens, it's kind of the same story. So we're really always on the hunt for those maintainer people, which really also can lead this cultural change. Cool. So now we heard a lot about <laughs> vision, strategy, mm -hmm. kind of this meta thing, and it's really important to kind of start from there. So I think that was around uh, 2015 or so where we had the platform. We were already in the thousands of user area. Um, you will see some current numbers a bit later in the presentation. Um, but this talk is all about DevOps, CI, CD. It's not about what the Siemens folks have, you know, in terms of vision um, ready. So 2015 was kind of the day where we started with CI/CD. Um, we already heard a lot about, um, you know, CI runner in the restricted environment in the company. And normally it's a thing that you have to go to your local IT department, you order a server, you have to wait a couple of months. And for us, this is not really, you know, in line with DevOps and CI/CD culture. So we kind of had the urge to change this. However, we had not the capabilities to change it. And of course, you could um, nowadays make beautiful, fancy Terraform setups or play around with Ansible and AWS. And up in the early days, this wasn't possible. We also didn't really have the monetary fund to, you know, with four people, um, offer uh, CI capabilities for a whole company with 300,000 people. So that's why we kind of said, hey, let's start small, like as all things should be. And you actually see it there. That's not just a photograph we downloaded from the internet. No, those were indeed the CI server, which made, uh, kind of, you know, backed our whole platform for more than 80% over, I think, more than a year. Um, we actually came up with a name for this kind of pattern, and you know, at least where we're from, uh, Switzerland, this kind of you know saying uh, already spread itself. It's junkyard computing. Uh, <laughs> thanks to the ease of use of the GitLab runner, you can set up new machines in a matter of minutes. If you have old machines laying around and um, you have a good enough setup in terms of network and everything, you can literally on a minute base set up new runners, new capabilities, and it's quite cost effective. So that was the idea where we really started out, had those old runners, but people loved it. They joined our platform, they could build f uh, free CI stuff without maintaining their own server, so it was all there. It was, uh, was already based on Docker, so people could actually really bring their own Docker image, and it, this was something which, you know, never existed at Siemens, and people literally were writing us an email like, hey, is this possible? I don't have to pay anything. It's like, yeah, sure. I mean, you're working for this company. And that's <laughs> as benign as it sounds, and nowadays it's like usual thing. But back in the past, it was a huge paradigm change, and, you know, it kind of sells itself, right? You get CI for free, you get a enormously stable service, um, you get a state-of-the-art Docker image, all based on GitLab Runner. So this really took off, and uh, I think, yeah. not sure how many builds do we have per month? Uh, 1.5 million <laughs> <laughs> per so month. So it's about, you said 44K per day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so during our talk, they're building a lot. So <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and and n today, we have 
our infrastructure on AWS, so there's no junker compute anymore. So this was really at the early day <laughs> to give the whole topic a strong push and, and uh, to increase the adoption across the company. Yeah, and that's really something we can recommend you a ton. So if you have a GitLab installation somewhere in your um, like company and you know want to advertise that, Having something like shared CRM is a really, really awesome way to argue with your um, department head or with the, the, the finance department because you suddenly see how well everything works and how much the saving can be. You don't have like <laughs> your part-time administrators anymore, uh, which, you know, after our maintain a server and have to build it to the company. Yeah. You have a really nice centralized and cool maintained GitLab runner setup. So... I would we, say only, yeah. we only do Docker builds <laughs> on our, on our uh, uh, shared runners. And we went through all the Linux distros. We went through a lot of kernel bugs and stuff uh, as we have uh, quite a high load on those things. So now, at the moment, we are with the uh, Nix OS on for the runners. <laughs> exactly. <yeah. laughs> so this was indeed a huge milestone for us. And the really sad part of the whole, whole story, a lot of part-time Jenkins administrator, they, you know, they have, have to take care they have of more Jenkins. time to do <laughs> important things now. Exactly. So, um, support is always a really important question, right? I mean, now we have this big platform, everyone uses it. Um, I think it's kind of time to hire tons of tons of telephone supporters. Um, but that's not something we really want, right? GitLab is a tool for developers. And if you're familiar with the GitLab community, if you already created an issue in the GitLab issue tracker and to be honest I can highly recommend you to interact with the community. You noticed they have top-notch people so if you have an issue and you ask them they can really help you and that's kind of something we also want to do. I mean Roger is a developer, I myself mainly uh, are a developer and we also want to create a platform and a community which helps other developers. So why should we hire support folks which didn't have the capabilities and like the rights to change anything. So we kind of said, hey, let's create a community which educates themselves. So that's kind of the help yourself ethos we try to establish. And in the same realm as GitLab, um, you know, we started out with a documentation portal. Sounds easy. And thanks to GitLab pages, it is indeed really easy. <laughs> but getting the community um, being part of that is a bit harder. So you also see the phone. That's a real thing. That's our support phone. It has no connection at all. So, <laughs> so far, we could proudly <laughs> say with zero support requests. <laughs> right. And, you know, there are many, many other ways how you can solve this whole support topic, you know, without having huge support stuff. I mean, in our case, we're still no. eight people maintaining and supporting all the people. Of course, we have the whole community supporting the people as well. So that's really lovely to see. So people have, for example, if, if, they, if they raise a question on the, in, on the internal social network, usually they get an answer within half an hour from other developers or from core team members and so on. So the people is really uh, heavily, uh, greatly engaged. Um, and we receive also merge requests for our <laughs> docs page and our roadmap is fully transparent for all the people so uh, all the people can see what we're working on, what are the next sub steps that we're discussing and uh, you can imagine the time yeah. uh, you have those IT tickets, I want to have this, this and yep. for us this was kind of a, a super important thing to don't have those classical help desk topic. And so it's not only about the support. So, you know, we, we didn't just show you the, the, this uh, slide to say, hey, you know, look at us. We don't have any support work to do. It's something even more important because having not a help desk, but really give power to the community enabled us to have this DevOps culture within Siemens. So, you know, rather than support ticket and you get a response like, oh, you should do it like this, you really have the folks teaching each other, hey, I have this Maven Spring Boot script, you know, to automate this with GitLab CI and then we'll do some automated security tests. Um, stuff like that is really part of our documentation, also part of our culture. So, you know, people really educate each other. Um, we 
more or less have know-how bubbles, you know, you have the Maven bubble and you have the GoGuy bubble and, you know, people can really go into those communities and, you know, just exchange with each other and that helped us rolling out this tremendous CI movement which happened at Siemens. I mean, in the first half year, we maybe had like 10,000 builds per month and as Roger just said, we have more than 40k builds per day at this point. So without having this distributed knowledge hub, this would not be possible. So it's not only about giving the people the right tool and giving them access, it's also about the mindset and the collaboration and the culture. And having a team that is able to handle also all those <laughs> questions <laughs> from experts. I guess that's, that's um, uh, another topic, super important to really have people that are able to answer all the question and giving direction on the issue tracker, no being able to say no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So now this is kind of the, the inner circle, uh, how we collaborate with Siemens, but I think more important um, is going to be how do we collaborate with the bigger circle, meaning the, the whole GitLab community. And I think Roger can say some words about Upstream open first. <laughs> so this is, um, I've learned a lot also during uh, the Linux, Linux and uh, bootloader kernel hacking and all those things. Usually you don't like to have patches and maintain patches and port them to the next version and so on. And for us it was absolutely clear we go without patches. We only deploy upstream, nothing else. If we want to have new features, we contribute them upstream. We do not patch our instance. As soon as they're merged upstream, we're going to deploy the next version. So we ship every month. We do about four production deployments per month. Uh, of course, also configuration change, uh, security patches, and so on. And this was one of the main reasons why we why we've started using GitLab. It's open source, and you can imagine, as a company as, uh, like Siemens, you have special needs, <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> that's why we wanna. Uh, be able to make that happen if you have a sp uh, special configuration we want to have in place or uh, we did GPG code signing uh, within GitLab, the OpenID Connect uh, provider, a uh, bunch of security features like 2FA enablement per group and, and uh, our session list you have within your user profile and many, many, many other things. <laughs> and this is, um, yeah, so we... Uh, we're uh, also a little bit proud that we are one of the uh, the biggest uh, contributor to GitLab itself. So we're not only using um, uh, open source software and uh, we're heavily contributing to several pieces. Yep. Also maintaining uh, add-on libraries like uh, the Python GitLab uh, maintained by Max. And uh, um, so those are the things we're doing uh, with the team of these uh, eight people and uh, with Diego working on upstream topics uh, primarily uh, for us uh, on GitLab. But maybe already disclaimer here, right? So we filtered out GitLab on purpose because <laughs> GitLab <laughs> is of course the biggest contributor and there are a ton of, um, I would even consider them GitLab heroes, um, you know, like private people working on GitLab like crazy as well. Um, but it's still cool and you see many, many companies there and the list is by far not finished. There's so many con companies contributing to GitLab and, um, you know, it's not only about contributing to the code base itself. For us, it's also the cultural aspect. It's exchanging yourself with the GitLab folks, with the community around GitLab, because there's so many things we can, of course, learn as well. And, you know, we will love this every day to kind of get new ideas, how to do CI, which we can then, you know, take into our culture and adapt it within Siemens again. So this whole exchange with the broader community and with GitLab itself, it's so valuable. And, you know, we can also s highly recommend you to try Contribute. Um, as GitLab famously says, uh, everything starts with a merge request. It's actually really easy. You don't have to be a programming hero. Um, they're really welcoming. And I can just highly recommend it. And as Roger said, for us, it was a huge cost saving as well to not maintain local patches or having to talk to uh, 30,000 people and saying them like, oh, no, sorry, we cannot accept your patch, but, you know, this patch we want to have. Um, that would have been not possible with the team size we have. So um, upstream first is certainly the way to go, and we would highly recommend that to you as well. Yeah. <laughs> 
save money and time and get rid of that maintenance n nightmare you will face. <laughs> Another topic, as we've mentioned, goals law. Start with a simple system. And we started with a simple system, and at the, at the early beginning, we just had one server on uh, bare metal. Later on, we moved to AWS. Now we, have, uh, we had one server until 20,000 people. So we reached the end of that drop down, so <laughs> to increase the machine <laughs> size. <laughs> and for us, it was the most important topic was reliability of the service, as we are developers as well. So we were heavily focusing on availability, reliability, on security, crash reporting, log metrics, and so on. So all the non-functional requirements, as you can imagine, in the business, businesses we are at Siemens, those things are running for 20 years. Super reliable uh, management systems for building or airports or whatever thing. And, and so the quality uh, aspects are super important for us and of course for uh, all the users. So those were our primary focus and then we already had the plan to split the things out, and uh, as we know the GitLab architecture quite well, as we are contributing to several parts uh, on GitLab itself, of course, um, we had the plan ready uh, to scale up. Nowadays, we have about uh, two Gitalis, uh, four front-end nodes, uh, three sidekicks, one pages, and, and a gatekeeper uh, for the internet uh, access. So we provide several services also via the internet, so uh, we can uh, have uh, contractors and so on on board. <laughs> and of course, Kubernetes is nice, <laughs> <laughs> and we might do this one day. But at the end, your, uh, our customers, our developers, they don't care about the fancy technology we are going to use. <laughs> they want to have a reliable service that is running all the time. And I guess in many cases you see people or projects building sophisticated, super nice, fantastic architectures. For what? Because they're addicted to, it, to technology. But don't forget about your customer and the people that what are their expe expectations. And um, yeah, we like to use uh, Kubernetes in the future, but uh, we are focusing on happy developers. That's the most important thing. <laughs> <laughs> and the people, they know us. They know uh, the people within the core team, so we are visible. We are persons are behind the service. So if, if, we, if, if we break things, we do incident, incident uh, uh, blog posts internally, tell the people, hey, what, what happens, what, what was wrong. Uh, we're talking uh, to the people and explaining um, uh, the good things as well, of course. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. So, you know, this is pretty much yet another story why Gold's Law, in our case, worked out just beautifully. And uh, we certainly also want to show you where we are now, where GitLab is now. Um, so, you see GitLab in 2019, if you can remember on the previous slide, you had this really nice architecture diagram of GitLab in the 2013s. That's the current GitLab architecture <laughs> diagram, so I would consider it a little bit more complex. So also they heavily moved into a more complex area because you know you have to if you want to have more feature and more speed. Um, the company itself grew as well, and on Siemens, on the other hand, you see the service is established. So you know if you say, "Hey, where is your code?" The answer is always it's on code Siemens.com. It's kind of the place to be because people like it. They're we don't have to force them. It's just a thing. Um, everyone can contribute. So, you know, we have just one big instance for the whole company. People can make the repository internally. That's all up to the each individual p uh, person and the product, of course. And, you know, if you're part of Siemens, you have this huge, um, you know, lake of different repositories you can collaborate with. And, you know, we really try to bring the open source culture in. And so far, we really succeeded. And then, of course, um, like I said, CICD with one and a half million builds every month. I would really say yes, 
the whole culture thing also kind of changed and you know it's now completely normal if you create a project and code Siemens com you also have CI enabled because again it's free it's easy <laughs> and yeah. uh, welcome GitLab to the uh, club of uh, complex application architectures huh? <laughs> 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 so we have tons of them <laughs> exactly so just maybe a rundown about the numbers so code Siemens com um, what's the scale you see it's uh, um, 32,000 people and I think we are already on 33 more or less now so you know even though um, we are already on a really high number it still grows if I would be uh, you know on the stock market, <laughs> I would certainly invest into this growing curve. <laughs> there is no end in sight. And the funny thing is Siemens is around 20,000 software developers. So we are already kind of beat this market and now have you know, people from finance on there because they really love the issue board and the Kanban you know, board feature. So it's not only developers which love the tool, it's also all the folks around. Um, you see those people actually do work on code Siemens com, so they have not just registered They also have a ton of projects. So every person around two projects and you know for us a really important metric GitLab is all about collaboration and Just having multiple projects. That's not really an indication for anything at all for us Also the notes are important. So every you know comment you write uh, in an issue or in a merge request is counted as a note so if uh, more than 3 million nodes, people actually indeed collaborate with each other. I mean, at least I myself don't write comments just to myself. So <laughs> that's kind of an indication <laughs> that people really talk to each other. <laughs> um, then, of course, you know, the CI builds. Now we are um, actually this week, we beat just 17 million. As I said, it still grows rapidly. And, you know, we see that the exponential curve still goes on. And... As mentioned, a lot of different countries, so the culture on Code Siemens come the whole exchange is certainly really interesting. And beneath all of that, you have eight people keeping this thing running more or less on the side. So that's quite a challenge. Beautifully. So Roger, some famous last words. <laughs> it's all about people. I would say that's that's the most important topic. It's not just uh, picking some people together and say, hey, that's your goal, go ahead. So having them being have the technical skills and the people skills to drive uh, uh, the direction to, uh, to bring that adoption into the company. And of course, being transparent in all the things you're doing. So. Uh, since the beginning, we were talking about all our ideas and stuff and, and uh, have our roadmap visible for all the people uh, within the company. So it's not like we are cool, you have to walk the talk. <laughs> That's key, of course, focus on your customers for developers, from developers. And that's why it's super important to have developers within such a team. We are able to answer any question from the kernel hacker uh, to the Java Spring Boot guy to the Node.js guy and so on. We are able to handle this. That's why we need no help desk. That's why we have documentation and so on. And of course, give and take. <laughs> it's contributing stuff to open source projects, to in-house projects or to the documentation and so on. Um, living that spirit within the company so that people see ah, they're not just within their little island uh, here with the team we are collaborating with all the people if you see for a conference for example having a the the, the speaker uh, the conference schedule and website is also on code teams com i see an issue there uh, i create a merge request <laughs> so it's in the past, people did uh, send emails, but uh, living that spirit of collaboration and uh, in in the in-house world, but also in the open source world, that's uh, that's the thing. Exactly. So, Max and Roger will um, in the upcoming live session show you how this really looks like behind the scenes, how one of the Siemens DevOps project actually do look like. Um, we are certainly available afterwards in the break if you have any question, and with this kind of guideline Roger just showed, um, you can by yourself kind of do the same thing as we, we at least hope. So thank you very much and uh, see you later. Thank you. <laughs>